this is the whole and here's the whole reason for the video we are the church of jesus christ re-established these are his words and it's in bold type here <laughs> very bold re-established or restored upon the earth in the latter days in preparation for the second coming of the lord jesus christ Okay, brothers and sisters, welcome back to the last dispensation. I almost bought, for, uh, forgot the name of the program. I'm your host, Troy. Let's jump right into this. Uh, I want to talk about our leaders and how bold they are. And I want to give you an example uh, from this last uh, May where uh, Elder Bednar went to the uh national press club he had um made made a public appearance at the national press club where uh well let let me let me explain to you what the national press club is here is the website uh press.org um and this was last may 2022 he's there there's all these journalists and here's the mission of the National Press Club. Uh, the National Press Club is the world's leading professional organization for journalists. It serves its members through professional development activities that bolster their skills, through services that meet the changing needs of the global communications profession, and through social activities that build a vital media community in Washington and around the world. The club is where news happens in the nation's capital and is a vigorous advocate of press freedom worldwide. Okay, so May uh, 2022, May 26, 2022, he uh, tells the National Press Club about the church he, he, and he answers questions. And I want to tell you how bold with the Holy Ghost these men are they're, they, the mantle that they hold, the authority that they they preach with, and they are not afraid, and they do not cower. And when I say cower, they are not ashamed of their testimonies. They are witnesses of Jesus Christ. They are special witnesses of Jesus Christ, whatever that may be, whether they've seen angels. Uh, Jesus Christ, whether they are, if it's manifest through the Holy Ghost only, uh, President Oak says not very many people have had a Alma the Younger experience, but what did he really mean by that? Because that could mean that not very many people had to be chastised like Alma the Younger was by an angel. So that was a tricky question. It doesn't mean that um, that these men aren't special witnesses of Jesus Christ. And they are, and they're not ashamed of their testimonies. Uh, so in May, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I, I want to give you an idea because I want to um, explain something else that goes along with this that Joseph Smith said. And we know it very well. And I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Elder Bednar tells the National Press club about the church of jesus christ the apostle says the church notice that it doesn't say the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints it says the church of jesus christ uh the apostle says the church does what it does because we love jesus christ and want to follow his example in our lives i'm going to leave the links to everything so that you guys can read it yourself but i'm going to go through this he's in front of a hundred journalists this was right after a school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, if we remember that. Um, and he, he, he acknowledges that, and he, he says that we are all mourning and praying for those who are in mourning um, and, and prays for peace and that we may all be guided to know what to do in that area. Uh, so this is not just members of the church that he's talking to. Uh, and this is, and it hasn't happened since uh, Gordon B. Hinckley. 
He says the basic purpose of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is to help people learn about the nature and attributes of God and to love God to become disciples of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love and serve our brothers and sisters. We believe God can change our hearts and make more of us from the inside out than we can ever make of ourselves, and we also believe that change many times is required from the outside in. It reminds me of um, in 1999, um, Ezra Tapp Pinson said that Christ takes the slums out of the people and then they take themselves out of the slums. The world would mold men by changing their environment. Let me see what he says exactly. The Lord works from the inside out. The world works from the outside in. The world would take people out of the slums, Christ takes the slums out of the people, and then they take themselves out of the slums. The world would mold men by changing their environment. The world would shape human behavior, but Christ can change human nature. Yes, Christ changes men, and changed men can change the world. Men changed for Christ will be captained in Christ. That reminded me of when Ezra Tapp Benson said that. He talks about humanity, and I'm going to get to why I believe this was very bold, because it was a statement to the world about the church and what we believe about the second coming of Jesus Christ, because he boldly, boldly says something here. He talks about the humanitarian aid and the budget annual report of the church, uh, what we're doing around the world in Ukraine. Uh, he says we don't have all the ans answers, but we try to help in every capacity where it's hunger, uh, immunizations, pro providing help with uh, for the disabled. Healthcare professionals provide physical and mental and emotional support. He talks about ed education being important, uh, both spiritual and secular. And uh, what our budget has been, what we put into uh, toward education, uh, mo money-wise, race relations, how we are are working with the NAACP, and uh, about academic scholarships and our fellowship with Amos C. Brown, how uh, President Nelson and Brother Brown are friends, uh, and the LGBTQ community. He also mentions within the LGBTQ community about uh, non-discrimination and religious freedom. He mentions both of those things, that they're equally important. We are proud to stand with our LGBTQ brothers and sisters. Uh, and, and he does say something else ab about the family, though. Okay? And here's the part where... where this, this is the whole, and here's the whole reason for the video. We are the Church of Jesus Christ, reestablished. These are his words, and it's in bold type here. <laughs> Very bold. Reestablished or restored upon the earth in the latter days in preparation for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do all of these things because as his disciples, we love him and want to follow his example in our lives. He didn't say we are good church that are that and we believe in Jesus Christ and then moving on or we're we do other good things like other churches and we do but he boldly mentions that we are preparing that this is a restored church upon the earth in the latter days in preparation for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen to that, right? Uh, he encourages them to go, uh, invites them to visit the renovated Washington, D.C. temple. Um, talks about ceremonies and uh, much like the children of Israel in the tabernacle and King Solomon's temple. And our fundamental principles, spiritual principles that are based on uh, the temple principles that are based on those principles. Um and how they are fundamental to changing people. Uh, he talks about the women of the church. 
that they make up a majority. One of the oldest women's organization in the, in the world is the Relief Society and Roots Tech and Genealogy. Why do Latter-day Saints do these things? We are the Church of Jesus Christ, reestablished or restored upon the earth in the latter days in preparation of the second coming. This is where he says it. Of Jesus Christ, Elder Bedner said, we do all of these things because his disciples, we love him and want to follow his example in our lives. Uh, before I get to the q and A, I I wanted to talk about another bold. This is what he emulates right here, the standard of truth, brothers and sisters. And this is an awesome talk. Uh, I think I'm going to do this sometime, but it, it is 2003. It was President Boyd K. Packer. It was, it's called The Standard of Truth Has Been Erected. And he goes into what we believe as a church. Okay? What our fundamental uh, doctrines and values and beliefs are. Who are we as a church of Jesus Christ? What do we believe? Why do we do the things we do? I'll go into that another time in, in the near future. But the standard of truth was a prof the standard of truth was a prophecy written by the prophet Joseph Smith. We used to recite it on our mission, but I don't think I can remember it now. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me get ahead. The standard of truth has been erected. No unhallowed hand can stop the work of progressing. Persecutions may rage. Mobs. No, that's a different one. Uh, no one holding hand can stop the truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, and independent until it has penetrated every continent, visited every clime. Wait, penetrated every continent. Every continent, visited every clime, swept every country, and sounded in every ear. Till the purposes of God shall be accomplished and the great Jehovah shall say the work is done. I had to cheat. But is not Elder Bednar, is he not, is he not fulfilling this prophecy right here at the National Press Club? I gotta sign in. I'm not gonna sign in. The standard of truth has been erected. No unhallowed hand can stop this work from progressing. He is boldly telling the world in Washington, D.C., this is going to happen. We are the true church, restored upon the earth, waiting for the second coming. The truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, independent. Boldly, brothers and sisters, that is the key. That is what he is being an example. He was being an example of right there. And many of us are an example uh, <clears throat> in that same respect, till it has penetrated every continent, visited every clime, swept every country, and sounded in every ear, till the purposes of God shall be accomplished, and the great Jehovah shall say, the work is done. So, let's go to the, uh, the Q&A down here. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to read all of it. I just wanted to... Uh... So, he's asked, uh, after speech... Elder Bednar answered many more. Several of these questions were edited, and his responses are below. Why is the church growing so much in Africa? He was asked that. You guys can read some of these, but the only one I really wanted to get to uh, <clears throat> was this one right here. Can you envision a day when LGBTQ member church members can marry and be sealed within the church? And this was his response. We believe that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God and that the family is central to the Father's plan for the eternal destiny and happiness, happiness of his children. That was his answer. Talk about boldly going forth. Right? And another, uh, and other good questions about bridging a gap between the LGBTQ community, race relations, church growing in Africa, and you guys can read the rest of this. It's good stuff. Uh, stereotyping and many other things. But I wanted to point out to you, brothers and sisters, that uh, of his boldness in declaring the gospel and, and his boldness in declaring that we are waiting for the second coming. 
to the world, he might as well said, we believe in Santa Claus, right? But this is not a myth, brothers and sisters. We are waiting for the Savior, the same Jesus Christ that saith to the world, I have trodden the winepress alone. But it's also that same Jesus Christ who is not sent into the world to condemn the world. But the Father sent his Son into the world so that the world might be saved through the atonement of Jesus Christ and his gospel. Mm -hmm.